In this segment, we're going to take a look at Mixcraft's automation features. You can automate volume, pan, and even some filters to change your tracks into something really special. Let's take a look. Earlier in our tutorial, we've reached into a track and clicked in this little rubber band automation and added a keyframe or breakpoint to have a change in volume. The way that works is, if our selector up at the top, this is our automation selector, is set to volume, then any changes we make in this view are going to add to or subtract from the volume setting that we have on our track. Let's solo this track and listen. As you can hear, the volume is going up or down relative to this original setting. If you click on a breakpoint, you can see that it has a value. So we can add 100 or 200%. So we can go from 100%, which is basically unchanged in volume from whatever the slider setting is, to 200%, twice as loud. And then we can fade all the way to 0%, which is uh, off. We can keep clicking and adding breakpoints, or we can hold down the Alt key and click to delete breakpoints. In addition, we can hold down the Shift key and grab the line segment. You can grab big chunks of the line here and move them together. So let's take a listen to what we've got now. Pretty cool. Volume is obeying, doing exactly what we want to do. Very cool. Now this first breakpoint here, I may not have that right at 100%, and I really want to get it back exactly where it should go. If I right-click on the breakpoint, that brings up the Edit Exact Value box, and I can type in an exact value. So I want that thing right at 100%. I'm going to hit 100, hit OK, and I don't have to fiddle around with the mouse trying to set the exact volume. I've got it right there. I'll do the same thing at the other end. Oops, 100, there we go. If we click on our volume selector or automation selector up here, we can move to pan. In addition to volume, we can also automate panning. The same way, I can just click and drag and make some radical changes to the panning of this track. Take a listen. Hopefully you're listening in stereo. So, pretty cool. You can automate that panning to be whatever you want it to be. And again, that's in addition to the pan setting that you have over here. So if we set our pan to be something like 10 o'clock, any panning moves we're going we're gonna to make here with our automation are relative to that. So even when fully panned to one side or the other, we're only going to we're going to be centered around this 10 o'clock uh, setting we have on our main fader. Pretty cool. All right, Mixcraft provides some even more fun options though. We have some filters. So underneath panning, we have low pass cutoff and high pass cutoff filters. What are those? Well, on most mixing boards and keyboards synthesizers, you have a filter called high pass cutoff and a filter called low pass cutoff. And what that does is just cuts off the high frequencies and passes the low frequencies. So it's called low pass, and it really should be low pass, high cutoff. The exact frequency that the cutting off happens at is what you can automate. So if I select low pass, and let's use our guitar here, it'll be a little bit easier to hear what we're doing. I start with my automation at 100%, so there's no, the cutoff frequency is super high, it's right, it's 100%, we're not cutting anything off. I can move that cutoff all the way down to zero, and you'll hear that I'll roll off all the high end on my guitar, and then it will come back again as we start to creep back up. Take a listen. There we go, losing highs. No highs left. Starting to come back in. And you can, you know, draw lots of radical curves and make a wah-wah out of that if you like. If you want more of the wah-wah sound, you have another feature here which you don't usually see on a mixing board, and that is a resonance control, like on a synth. Synth, you usually have a cutoff and a resonance, and resonance makes a sharp peak right at the cutoff frequency, kind of like a wah-wah pedal, and makes that effect really pronounced. 
Let's go ahead and turn up the resonance control. I'm just going to hold down shift here so I can grab the whole line. We'll turn our resonance up a little over halfway, and now we should hear a pretty radical wah effect. So the resonance controls, you know, pretty cool. We could do the same thing. Let's get rid of our uh, uh, low pass here. We'll get rid of our resonance. Let's do the same thing with high pass. Oops, I didn't mean to pick resonance. The high pass cutoff, we're going to roll off the base of this guitar. And it's a little thick anyway. It could use rolling off. Another cool feature is you can select a bunch of time in your track and then use the fade in, fade out features. I'm going to right click to get to those. I'm going to say fade in. We're going to fade in medium. There we go. Now we've got a fade in going on. And I'll go ahead and rise that up here. You can hear we lost all our low end. So that's what you can do with the low pass and high pass filters. A lot of pro recording guys will use the high pass cutoff on every track except for kick and bass. Try to keep all that subsonic low frequency out of tracks that don't need it so that you can get a little bit more energy out of your kick and bass. Real, uh, it's one of the secrets to a pump in low end. So we'll do that. We'll, we'll uh, get rid of all these breakpoints here that just made the sweep and then holding down shift we'll uh, there we go, that's a little better. We'll grab this and roll off the low end on that guitar so it's not uh, getting too fat. So when do you use this automation stuff? Well, volume automation is the most common thing. Something like on this track in this song, we've got guitar players playing rhythm until the second go-round of the song, then he starts jumping to lead. Let's listen to that. <laughs> So it might be cool to grab his part and boost the lead portion of his playing. So he'll play rhythm in the beginning, some other instrument, maybe piano, is uh, doing some lead-like stuff right before the, the lead there. And we'll go back to 100% with the piano, put him back where he goes after he's done featuring there, and hand off the lead so the volume will just go down on the piano and up on the guitar, and we'll hand off the lead from piano to guitar. <laughs> Piano, in fact, is getting a little out of control there, so we can bring him down. We have a crazy piano, and I'll get him just out of the way, so there's only one guy soloing. One more time. Pretty cool. That's how you automate your mix to make it something more exciting and moving than you would have with just static levels and static panning and static filtering.